Welcome to the Heartbeat Chronicles, the podcast that delves into the intricate dynamic of love, sex, relationships, lifestyle, journaling, counseling, and therapy, and the messy in between. Get ready to explore the various aspects of life's heartbeat and discover insightful conversations that resonate with you. In today's episode, we're diving into something truly special, the Hash Hay Soulful Riley segment. This is where I get to connect with all of you, my incredible soulful ambassadors, on a personal level. I'll be answering your heartfelt questions, taking in your requests, and sharing meaningful conversations with you. Whether it's about love, life's ups and downs, or anything in between, this is our space to explore it all together. So let's get into it. Hey there, beautiful souls. This is Riley Mitchell, your host of Heartbeat Chronicles, where every beat tells a story. To all my soulful ambassadors tuning in, welcome back. And if you're joining us for the first time, congratulations. You've just become an official soulful ambassador. Today, we're diving into another hash, Hey Soulful Riley segment, where we get up close and personal with your questions and experiences. Get ready for some heart-to-heart chats. Oh my goodness, can you believe it's been three whole weeks since our first hash Hey Soulful Riley segment? I'm absolutely buzzing with excitement to be back with you all. Let me tell you, the response to our first episode was nothing short of incredible. You guys, my beautiful soulful ambassadors, you blew me away with your questions, your openness, and the love you've shown for this space we're creating together. Every message, every story shared, it all touched my heart so deeply. I can feel the energy, the connection we're building, and it's truly magical. God, I just love how we're growing and learning together through these conversations. It's like we're on this amazing journey, hand in hand, heart to heart. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Now let's dive into today's gems, shall we? Now, for those of you tuning in for the first time, let me give you the scoop on Hash Hey Soulful Riley. This is where we get up close and personal, folks. It's your chance to throw your burning questions my way about life, love, and everything in between. We're talking real talk, no filters, just heart-to-heart conversations. So don't be shy. Jump right in and be part of our soulful family. All right, let's dive into our first question from one of our soulful ambassadors. She asks, Hey, Soulful Riley, How do I even start making friends in my 30s when I feel like everyone already has their circle? Oh, honey, I feel you on this one. Making friends as an adult can feel like trying to squeeze into skinny jeans after Thanksgiving dinner, a bit uncomfortable and maybe even impossible. But let me tell you, it's not only possible, it can be incredibly rewarding. First things first, let's address the elephant in the room, that nagging feeling that everyone else has their squad all figured out. Trust me, it's not true. People are constantly evolving, moving, changing jobs, and guess what? They're looking for new connections too. So how do we break into this seemingly impenetrable world of adult friendships? Well, it starts with you, my dear. You've got to put yourself out there. And I don't mean just physically, although that's important too. I'm talking about opening up your heart and mind to new possibilities. Start by identifying your interests. Are you a bookworm, a fitness enthusiast, a diehard foodie? Whatever floats your boat, there's likely a group or community out there that shares your passion and boom, there's your entry point. Now I know what you're thinking, but Riley, I don't have time for new hobbies. Well, who said anything about new hobbies? We're talking about leveraging what you already love. If you're into books, join a local book club. If you're a gym rat, strike up a conversation with that person you always see on the treadmill next to you. If you're a food lover, why not join a cooking class or a food tasting event? The key here is consistency. Show up regularly to these places or events. Familiarity breeds comfort and comfort opens the door to conversation. Remember, friendship is like a garden. It needs time, attention, and nurturing to grow. Now let's talk about the workplace. We spend a huge chunk of our lives at work, so why not cultivate friendships there? Suggest after-work drinks, organize a lunch outing, or even start a hobby group within your company. You'd be surprised how many people are in the same boat as you, just waiting for someone to make the first move. And speaking of making moves, don't be afraid to be the initiator. See someone at an event you'd like to connect with? strike up a conversation. Worst case scenario, you have a pleasant chat. Best case, you might just spark a new friendship. Now I know putting yourself out there can feel scary, but remember, vulnerability is the birthplace of connection. Share a bit of yourself, be genuine, and most importantly, be interested in others. Ask questions, listen actively, and show that you value their thoughts and experiences. And here's a little secret. Not every interaction needs to lead to a deep, lifelong friendship. Sometimes having a variety of acquaintances and casual friends can be just as fulfilling. 
It's about creating a network of connections that enrich your life in different ways. Lastly, don't forget about the power of technology. There are apps and websites dedicated to helping adults make friends. Meetup, Bumble BFF, or even Facebook groups can be great tools for connecting with like-minded individuals in your area. Remember, my soulful ambassador, making friends in your 30s isn't about recreating your college experience. It's about forming meaningful connections that align with who you are now. It might take time, and yes, it might feel a bit awkward at first, but keep at it, stay open, and before you know it, you'll have your own circle of amazing friends who appreciate the wonderful 30-something you. All right, soulful ambassadors, let's dive into our next question. This one's for all my introverted friends out there. The question is, hey, soulful Riley, what if I'm an introvert? How can I make friends without draining myself? Oh, honey, I feel you on this one. Being an introvert myself, I know the struggle is real. But let me tell you, being an introvert doesn't mean you can't have amazing friendships. It just means we need to approach it a little differently. First things first, let's embrace our introverted nature. It's not a flaw, it's a superpower. We have the ability to form deep, meaningful connections. So instead of trying to be someone you're not, lean into your strengths. Now here's the T, quality over quantity, always. As introverts, we don't need a huge circle of friends. Focus on finding one or two people who really get you. Look for those kindred spirits who appreciate quiet nights in, deep conversations, and don't drain your energy. One strategy I love is what I call introvert-friendly activities. Think book clubs, art classes, or even online communities centered around your interests. These settings give you a natural topic to bond over without the pressure of constant small talk. Here's another tip. Set boundaries, honey. It's okay to limit your social engagements. Maybe instead of a wild night out, suggest a cozy coffee date or a peaceful walk in the park. Your true friends will understand and appreciate your need for low-key hangouts. And let's talk about recharging. After social interactions, make sure you give yourself time to recover. It's not selfish. It's self-care. Maybe that's curling up with a good book, taking a relaxing bath, or just having some quiet time alone. Remember, friendship isn't about how often you hang out. It's about the quality of your connection. So don't feel pressured to meet up all the time. A text, a thoughtful email, or a quick phone call can keep the bond strong without overwhelming you. Lastly, be honest with your friends about being an introvert. The right people will not only understand, but will appreciate your authenticity. They might even surprise you by feeling the same way. So, my introverted, soulful ambassador, embrace who you are, your quietness, your depth, your need for solitude. These are all beautiful parts of you. The right friends will see that beauty and cherish it. You've got this, honey. Your tribe is out there, waiting to connect with the amazing introverted you. Remember, making connections is a journey, not a destination. Whether you're an introvert or extrovert in your 20s or 50s, there's always room for new friendships. Keep putting yourself out there, stay true to who you are, and watch the magic happen. Question three. Hey, Soulful Riley, I'm really busy with work and family. How do I make time for new friendships? All right. Let's talk about the juggling act of balancing work, family, and friendships. I know, I know, it feels like we're all circus performers sometimes, doesn't it? But here's the thing. Making time for new friendships doesn't have to mean adding another ball to your already impressive juggling routine. Instead, think of it as sneaking friendship into your existing circus acts. Got a workout planned? Invite a potential friend to join you. Suddenly, you're not just burning calories, you're building connections. Or how about turning your boring meal prep into a fun cooking session with a new buddy? Two birds, one stone, and probably a few laughs along the way. Remember, friendship doesn't always need a grand gesture or a huge time commitment. It's about those little moments of connection. A quick text, a shared meme, or even a brief coffee catch-up can work wonders. The key is being intentional. So let's make friendship the secret ingredient in our daily recipe of life, shall we? Question four. Hey, Riley. What if I feel awkward or nervous about reaching out to people I want to be friends with? Let's talk about that awkward dance we all do when trying to make new friends. You know, that moment when you're thinking, should I say hi? What if they think I'm weird? Oh God, what do I do with my hands? Trust me, we've all been there. And it's about as comfortable as wearing wet socks. But here's the thing. That person you want to connect with, they're probably feeling just as nervous as you are. We're all just overgrown kids trying to find our playground buddies. So take a deep breath and remember, authenticity is your secret weapon. Start small. Maybe comment on something you have in common, like their awesome I Love Tacos t-shirt, 
or the fact that you both look equally lost at this networking event. A simple, hey, at least we're not the only ones who showed up, can break the ice. And if you're reaching out online, keep it casual. Slide into those DMs with a meme or a comment about their recent post. Just be yourself. Your wonderfully awkward, trying their best self. Because at the end of the day, real connections happen when we drop the act and just let our authentic selves shine through. Question five. Hey, Soulful Riley, I've been hurt by friends in the past. How do I open up to new friendships without fear? Let's talk about opening up after you've been hurt. I get it. Putting yourself out there can feel like you're setting yourself up for another emotional bruising. But here's the thing. Not every new friendship is going to be a replay of past pain. It's all about baby steps, folks. Start by dipping your toe in the friendship pool, not diving head first. Allow yourself to open up gradually, like you're slowly peeling an onion. Minus the tears, hopefully. It's okay to be cautious, to take your time building trust. And remember, setting boundaries isn't being mean, it's being smart. It's like putting up a fence around your emotional garden. You decide who gets to come in and smell the roses. So go ahead, give new friendships a chance. You deserve to have people in your life who'll water your flowers, not trample them. Question six. Hey, Soulful Riley, should I maintain friendships that feel one-sided or draining? All right, let's talk about those friendships that leave you feeling like you're doing all the heavy lifting. You know the ones where you're always the one reaching out, planning hangouts, or offering support, but rarely getting the same in return. It's like being stuck in a one-person tug of war. Look, we've all been there and it's not a great feeling. But here's the thing. Friendships should be a two-way street, not a cul-de-sac where all the traffic is headed in one direction, yours. If you're constantly feeling drained after hanging out with someone, or if you realize you're the only one putting in any effort, it might be time to take a step back and reassess. Your emotional well-being is important, and it's okay to prioritize it. This doesn't mean you need to dramatically cut people off. Sometimes creating a little distance can help you gain perspective. Maybe reduce the frequency of your hangouts or set some boundaries around your time and energy. Remember, true friendships should add value to your life, not leave you feeling depleted. It's all about finding that balance where both parties are contributing and benefiting. So don't be afraid to invest your time and energy where it's reciprocated. Your future, happier self will thank you for it. Question seven. Hey, Soulful Riley, how can I deepen friendships with people I already know but don't feel close to? Let's talk about leveling up those casual friendships. You know those people you kind of know but don't really know? Yeah, those folks. Well, turning them into real friends isn't as hard as you might think. The secret sauce? It's all about getting a little vulnerable and creating shared experiences. Now, I'm not saying you need to spill your deepest, darkest secrets on day one. Start small. Maybe invite them for a coffee and ask about their dreams or what keeps them up at night. Show genuine interest in their lives beyond the surface level stuff. And hey, why not suggest doing something together that's a bit out of both your comfort zones? Maybe try a cooking class or go on a hike. Shared experiences, especially ones that push you both a little, can create a bond faster than you can say BFF. Remember, real friendship grows in those moments of authenticity. So don't be afraid to let your guard down a bit. Share your own struggles and victories. You might be surprised how quickly acquaintances can turn into your ride or die crew. Question eight. Hey, Riley. I've moved to a new city and don't know anyone. What's the best way to build a social circle from scratch? Let's talk about building a social circle from scratch in a new city. Trust me, I've been there and it can feel like you're the new kid at school all over again. But here's the thing, it's also a golden opportunity to curate your social life exactly how you want it. First up, embrace your inner explorer. Hit up local events, join a sports league, or find a quirky hobby group. You'd be surprised how many friendships start over a shared love of, I don't know, underwater basket weaving. And hey, don't be shy about using technology to your advantage. Apps like Meetup or Bumble BFF can be your secret weapon. It's like dating, but for friends, and usually with less awkward goodnight kisses. Remember, building a social circle takes time, so be patient with yourself. Every casual chat with a neighbor or friendly exchange at a coffee shop is a step towards your new squad. Before you know it, you'll be the go-to person for all the city's hidden gems. Question nine. Hey, Riley, how do I handle friendships where I feel like I've outgrown the person but don't want to hurt their feelings? Ah, uh, the classic friendship growing pains. You know, it's like when you're still wearing those jeans from college, but suddenly they just don't fit quite right anymore. It happens with friendships, too. Sometimes we outgrow people, and that's okay. 
It doesn't mean you need to dramatically unfriend them on social media or burn their photo in a ritual ceremony. Instead, try the gentle fade out approach. It's like slowly turning down the volume on a song rather than abruptly hitting pause. Maybe you don't need to catch up every week, but you can still send a friendly text now and then. Remember, it's not about cutting people out of your life entirely. It's about finding a new balance that works for both of you. And hey, who knows? Maybe down the road, you'll find yourselves in sync again. Life has a funny way of bringing people back around when you least expect it. So keep it kind, keep it cool, and trust that everyone's on their own journey. Question 10. Hey, Soulful Riley, is it ever too late to make new friends in your 30s or beyond? All right, let's talk about making friends in your 30s and beyond. Spoiler alert, it's never too late. I know some of you might be thinking, but Riley, I missed the friendship boat. It sailed away with my 20s. Well, I'm here to tell you that boat is still in the harbor and it's got your name on it. Making friends as an adult can actually be way more awesome than you think. Why? Because now you know yourself better than ever. You're not trying to impress anyone with how many beers you can chug or pretending to like obscure bands just to fit in. Nope, you're authentically you and that's magnetic. So how do you cultivate these grown-up friendships? It's all about putting yourself out there, join a book club, sign up for a cooking class, or volunteer for a cause you care about. The key is to show up consistently. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day and neither are lasting friendships. Be patient, stay open, and before you know it, you'll have a squad that rivals any sitcom friend group. Trust me, it's worth the effort. Making friends in your 30s and beyond, it's not just possible, it's incredibly rewarding. Think about it. You're wiser, you know yourself better, and you're ready for those deep connections. So stay open to new possibilities, be your authentic self, and remember, good friendships are like fine wine. They take time to develop, but they're oh so worth it. Keep putting yourself out there, stay curious about others, and don't rush the process. Your tribe is waiting for you, no matter your age. We're diving into something special, your amazing feedback on season two, episode three, all about making friends. I've been blown away by your responses, and I can't wait to share some of your stories and insights. So let's jump right in and spread some love at Martin Lawrence Official. Riley, this episode hit home for me. I've been struggling with making new friends since moving to LA, and your tips about joining groups that align with your interests really made me think. I'm going to check out a hiking club next weekend. All right. Let's talk about our friend Martin Lawrence. Not the actor, folks, but our listener who's trying to make friends in the City of Angels. Martin, buddy, I feel you. L.A. can be as lonely as a tumbleweed in a ghost town if you don't know where to look. But you've got the right idea with that hiking club. I mean, what better way to bond than huffing and puffing up a trail together? You'll be making friends and working on that Hollywood physique at the same time. Two birds, one stone, am I right? Keep that positive attitude, Martin. Before you know it, you'll have a squad that's tighter than the parking situation on Sunset Boulevard. Remember, every friend starts as a stranger, so get out there and conquer those hills. At Sarah Loves Books UK. Hey Riley, I'm from London, and your episode really spoke to me. I've been in the same friend group for years, but lately, I felt like I need new connections. The reminder that it's never too late to make new friends was really comforting. Thank you. Hey there, Sarah. Your message from London really struck a chord with me. It's so common to feel like we need new connections, even when we've got a solid friend group. And you know what? That's totally okay. Life is all about growth, and sometimes that means expanding our social circles. London is such a vibrant city, full of diverse people and experiences. I bet there are so many potential friends out there who share your love for books and other interests. Remember, it's never too late to make new friends. In fact, I'd say we get better at it as we grow older because we know ourselves better. So go ahead, Sarah. Embrace this desire for new connections. Your current friends will always be there, and adding new people to your life can bring fresh perspectives and exciting experiences. You've got this, Etyra Inspire Me. Riley, I've always been shy, and making friends feels like a struggle, especially now in my 30s. This episode gave me the push I needed to get out of my comfort zone and start with small steps. Thank you. Hey, Tyra, I totally get where you're coming from. Being shy and putting yourself out there, especially in your 30s, can feel like climbing Mount Everest. But here's the thing. You've already taken the biggest step by acknowledging your feelings and deciding to make a change. That's huge. Remember, it's all about those small steps. Maybe it's saying hello to a neighbor or joining an online book club. Each little action builds your confidence. And guess what? Those meaningful connections you're looking for, 
They're just on the other side of your comfort zone. So keep pushing those boundaries bit by bit. You've got this, Tyra, and I'm rooting for you every step of the way. At Carlos J. Travel Adventures from Argentina. Hola, Riley. I've been traveling a lot for work, and maintaining friendships is hard when you're always on the move. Your suggestion to combine social time with things I'm already doing made me realize I can invite people to join me in my adventures. Thank you from Argentina. Hola, Carlos. I totally get it. Juggling work travel and social connections can feel like a circus act sometimes. But I love that you've taken the suggestion to heart about combining your social time with things you're already doing. It's brilliant, right? Imagine inviting people to join you on your adventures. Not only are you nurturing friendships, but you're also creating unforgettable memories together. And hey, who wouldn't want to explore Argentina with a local guide like you? Keep embracing those opportunities to blend your work life with your social life. I bet you'll find some incredible connections along the way. Kira Soul Seeker. Riley, I was stuck in a rut with friendships that felt draining. Your advice about evaluating those relationships and setting boundaries was exactly what I needed to hear. I feel more empowered to make room for healthier friendships. Hey, Kira, I'm so glad this episode resonated with you especially the part about evaluating friendships and setting boundaries. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's so crucial for your well-being. Remember, it's okay to step back from relationships that drain you. By setting those boundaries, you're not just protecting your energy. You're also making space for new, more fulfilling connections. Keep listening to your gut and prioritizing those friendships that lift you up and support you. You're doing great by taking the step towards healthier relationships. It's all about surrounding yourself with people who bring out the best in you. At Daniel Adventures NL from the Netherlands. Riley, I'm living in the Netherlands and making friends here as an expat has been tough. This episode gave me some new ideas like trying social apps for expats. Thanks for the motivation. Hey there, Daniel. I totally get how tough it can be to make friends as an expat. The Netherlands is amazing, but I know it can feel isolating at first. Your idea of trying social apps for expats is spot on. It's a great way to connect with people who are in the same boat as you. Plus, you might find some locals who are interested in meeting international friends, too. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Maybe suggest a meetup at a local cafe or join an expat-friendly event. Remember, everyone's looking for connection, so you're not alone in this. Keep that positive attitude, and I'm sure you'll find your Dutch crew in no time. You've got this, Daniel. Lena Hartlife. Riley, I really appreciated your point about quality over quantity. I've always felt like I needed a big group of friends, but now I'm focusing on nurturing deeper connections with a few close people. It's a game changer. Hey there, Lena. I'm so glad you brought up this point about quality over quantity. It's such a game changer, isn't it? I totally get it. There's this pressure sometimes to have this huge group of friends, like you're not social enough if you don't. But let me tell you, those deep, meaningful connections with just a few close people, that's where the real magic happens. It's not about how many friends you can list off. It's about those ride or die people who really get you. So keep nurturing those beautiful connections you've got. Trust me, a small circle of true friends is worth way more than a crowd of casual acquaintances. You're absolutely on the right path, and I'm cheering you on. At James on the Move from Sydney, Australia. Hey, Riley, I've moved to Sydney, and starting over with friendships has been harder than I thought. Your episode helped me realize it's okay to take my time and let things happen naturally. Thanks for the encouragement. Hey, James. Starting over in a new city can be tough, especially when it comes to friendships. James, I totally get it. Sydney's a vibrant place, but it can feel overwhelming at first. Remember, it's okay to take your time. Friendships aren't built overnight, and the best ones often develop naturally. Keep putting yourself out there, explore your new home, and don't rush the process. Before you know it, you'll find your Sydney tribe. Just stay open. Be patient with yourself and enjoy the journey of discovering your new city. At Monique Strongheart, Riley, this episode made me reflect on the importance of vulnerability in making new friends. I've always been guarded, but your story about letting your walls down inspired me to be more open. I'm excited to try this new approach. Hey, Monique, I'm so proud of you for recognizing the importance of opening up in friendships. It can be scary to let your guard down, but that's where the magic happens. Remember, being vulnerable doesn't mean spilling your deepest secrets right away. It's about showing your authentic self, bit by bit. Maybe start by sharing a small challenge you're facing or expressing genuine interest in others' lives. As you practice this, you'll likely find that people respond positively and your connections deepen. Keep embracing this new approach, Monique. You're on the path to creating truly meaningful friendships. 
at Josh Soul Musician. Riley, your episode was a reminder that I need to be intentional about friendships. I've been letting them slide, but I'm going to start putting in the effort to reach out and check in more. Thanks for the push. Hey, Josh, you hit the nail on the head when you mentioned being intentional about friendships. It's so easy to let relationships slide when life gets busy, but your realization is spot on. Reaching out and checking in, even with a quick text or call, can make a world of difference. It's like watering a plant. A little effort goes a long way. I'm proud of you for recognizing this and taking action. Remember, it's not about grand gestures, but consistent small acts of connection. Keep it up, Josh. Your friends are lucky to have someone who values them so much. At Muikali Charming from Nairobi, Kenya. Riley, this episode really touched me. Making new friends in my 30s, especially as a mom, has been hard. But your advice on finding communities based on shared experiences like parenting has given me hope. I'm thinking of joining a local mom's group here in Nairobi. Hey, Muikali. I totally get it. Parenting can be isolating sometimes, but it's also a fantastic opportunity to connect with others going through the same experience. I love that you're thinking of joining a local mom's group in Nairobi. That's such a great idea. These groups are perfect for finding people who understand the joys and challenges of raising kids. Plus, Nairobi has such a vibrant community spirit. I'm sure you'll find a supportive tribe there. Keep putting yourself out there, mama. You're doing amazing, and those connections will happen at Otieno the Creative from Kasumu, Kenya. Hi, Riley. Your episode made me realize how much I've neglected my friendships while focusing on work. I'm based in Kasumu, and I've been so busy with my art projects. Your reminder to be intentional about reaching out to old friends really hit me. I'm going to reconnect with a few this week. Hey there, Otieno. I totally get how easy it is to get caught up in work, especially when you're passionate about your art projects. Kasumu must be such an inspiring place for your creativity. But you know what? I'm really proud of you for recognizing that your friendships need some TLC too. It's all about finding that sweet spot between your professional drive and your personal connections. Remember those friendships can actually fuel your creativity and give you new perspectives. So kudos to you for planning to reconnect with old friends this week. It's these small intentional actions that keep our relationships thriving. Keep nurturing both your art and your friendships. Trust me, your future self will thank you for it. At Zawadi Heart from Mombasa, Kenya. Riley, I've always been hesitant to make new friends because of trust issues, but this episode made me realize that it's okay to take small steps. Your advice on starting with casual hangouts instead of deep connections right away makes so much sense. Thank you from Mombasa. Zawadi, I totally get where you're coming from with those trust issues. It can be scary to put yourself out there, right? But I love that you're recognizing the value in taking small steps. That's exactly the way to go. Starting with casual hangouts is such a smart approach. It takes the pressure off and lets you ease into new connections at your own pace. Remember, every strong friendship started with a simple hello, so keep taking those baby steps, Zawadi. Trust your instincts and don't be afraid to let people in gradually. Mombasa's warm vibes are the perfect backdrop for your journey. You've got this. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone who shared their stories and feedback. Your experiences and insights are what make this podcast so special. Remember... Cultivating meaningful friendships is an ongoing journey, and we're all in this together. Keep sharing your stories with me. I absolutely love hearing from you. We're diving into a topic that's been on everyone's minds lately. Love at first sight. Is it real? Is it just a fairy tale? I will be answering some of your amazing questions from our previous episode on love at first sight reality, or myth. So grab your favorite drink, get comfy, and let's unravel this romantic mystery together. At Emma Soul Lover, hey Riley, do you believe love at first sight is real or is it just infatuation? Can something that feels so instant turn into a deep, long-lasting love? You know, Emma, I think what we often call love at first sight is more like an intense spark or connection. It's that immediate chemistry that makes your heart race and your palms sweat. But here's the thing, deep lasting love, that's a whole different ball game. It's built on shared experiences, trust, and really getting to know someone. Can that initial spark turn into something more? Absolutely, but it needs time and nurturing to grow. So while I wouldn't call it love right away, that first magical moment could definitely be the beginning of something beautiful. Just remember, true love is a journey, not a destination. At Tyrell Heartbound, 
Riley, do you think people confuse lust with love at first sight? How can someone tell the difference? It's a tricky one, folks. These two feelings can be so intense and exciting that it's easy to mix them up. Lust is like that immediate heart racing attraction. You know, when you see someone and go, wow, it's all about that physical chemistry, but love at first sight, that's a whole different ball game. It's more than just looks. It's like your souls are doing a happy dance together. The real test is time. If it's just lust, it'll fizzle out faster than a cheap firework. But if it's love, it'll grow stronger, like a plant you keep watering. So Tyrell, give it time, and you'll figure out if it's lust or the beginning of something deeper. At Grace Journey, from Nigeria. Riley, what if you've experienced love at first sight and it didn't work out? Does that mean it wasn't real love? Grace, honey, I totally get where you're coming from. Those intense feelings can be so real and powerful. But here's the thing. Just because it didn't last doesn't mean it wasn't genuine in the moment. Sometimes we experience these incredible instant connections that feel like love. But love needs more than just that initial spark to thrive long term. Think of it like planting a seed. That first moment is when the seed goes into the soil, full of potential and promise. But for it to grow into a strong, lasting plant, it needs time, nurturing, and the right conditions. Your feelings were absolutely valid, but lasting love requires more ingredients, like compatibility, shared values, and mutual effort over time. At Samuel Truth Teller, do you think love at first sight can happen more than once? Or is it a one-time thing with one special person? Great question, Samuel. I believe that those intense, instant connections can definitely occur multiple times in life. Love at first sight isn't necessarily a once-in-a-lifetime experience reserved for just one person. Think about it. We're constantly growing, changing, and meeting new people. Each encounter is unique, and so is each potential spark of instant attraction or connection. But here's the thing. While you might feel that immediate wow factor more than once, what really matters is what happens next. Does that initial feeling grow into something deeper and more meaningful over time? That's the real test. So Samuel, keep your heart open. You never know when that magical instant connection might strike again. At Carla Soul Vibes, Riley, can love at first sight work in long distance relationships? If you feel it with someone you just met but live far apart, can it last? Carla, you asked a great question. Can that initial spark survive the distance? Well, it's definitely possible, but it comes with its own set of challenges. When you feel that intense connection with someone you've just met, it's exciting and full of potential. But in a long distance situation, you'll need to work extra hard to nurture that connection. It's all about communication, trust, and patience. You'll need to find creative ways to spend time together, even if it's virtual. Video calls, online games, watching movies together, these can all help build intimacy. Remember though, that true love grows over time. So while that initial feeling is wonderful, Focus on developing a deeper bond that can withstand the distance. At Jonathan in the Stars, from Brazil. Riley, I'm a romantic and want to believe in love at first sight, but my friends say it's unrealistic. How can I balance my hope with reality? Hey there, Jonathan from Brazil. I love your question about balancing romance with reality. It's totally okay to be a romantic and believe in the magic of love at first sight. There's something beautiful about that hope and openness to instant connections. But here's the thing. While that initial spark can be amazing, deep love often takes time to grow. It's like planting a seed. The excitement of seeing it sprout is fantastic, but you need to nurture it, give it time, and sometimes face a few storms before you get a strong lasting plant. So keep that romantic spirit alive, but also be open to the idea that true love might unfold more slowly. The key is to enjoy the journey, whether it starts with a bang or a gentle hello. At Sophie Vibes Only. Riley, what's the science behind love at first sight? Is it just chemicals in the brain or something deeper? Now, let's dive into the science behind love at first sight. Sophie, you've asked a fascinating question that many of us have wondered about. Is it just chemicals in the brain or something deeper? Well, the truth is it's a bit of both. Science suggests that what we call love at first sight is actually a potent cocktail of attraction, chemistry, and brain activity. When we see someone we're instantly drawn to, our brain releases a flood of feel-good chemicals like dopamine and oxytocin. These are the same chemicals associated with pleasure and bonding. It's like our brain is saying, hey, pay attention to this person. But here's the kicker. While this initial reaction is definitely chemical, 
Whether it turns into something deeper depends on building emotional and intellectual connections over time. So, love at first sight might be the spark, but real, lasting love, that's a slow burn. At a Monty Love Story from Kenya. Riley, have you ever personally experienced love at first sight? If so, did it turn into a real relationship? You know, I've definitely had those moments where I felt an instant powerful connection with someone. There was this time in college when I locked eyes with someone across a crowded coffee shop and it felt like the world stopped spinning for a second. We ended up talking for hours that day and it felt magical. But here's the thing. While that initial spark was real and exciting, it took time to develop into something deeper. We dated for a while and although it didn't work out in the long run, I learned a lot about the difference between that initial rush and true lasting love. So to answer Amani's question, yes, I've experienced something like love at first sight, but I've found that real love is something that grows and deepens over time. At Max Heart Thoughts. Riley, can love at first sight happen with friendships too? Can you instantly feel like someone is going to be a lifelong friend? You know, Max asked a great question about whether love at first sight can happen with friendships too. And I've got to say, absolutely. Those instant Deep connections aren't just reserved for romantic relationships. Sometimes you meet someone and it's like, bam, instant best friend material. You just click and it feels like you've known each other forever. It's like finding your platonic soulmate, you know? And often these are the friendships that grow into those beautiful lifelong bonds. The ones where you can go months without talking. But when you do, it's like no time has passed at all. So if you ever feel that instant connection with a potential friend, trust that feeling. It might just be the start of an amazing friendship at Jade Soul Blossom. Riley, how can someone protect their heart when they believe in love at first sight but don't want to rush into things? Jade asked a great question about protecting your heart when you believe in love at first sight. It's all about finding that sweet spot between excitement and caution. Sure, embrace that magical feeling when it happens, but don't throw all your cards on the table right away. Take your time to really get to know the person behind that initial spark. Build trust gradually and see if your connection deepens over time. Remember, protecting your heart doesn't mean building walls. It's about pacing yourself emotionally. Enjoy the journey of falling in love, but keep your feet on the ground. Balance that heart-fluttering excitement with a healthy dose of patience and self-awareness. That way you're giving yourself the best chance at a love that's both magical and lasting. Wow, what an incredible journey through the world of love at first sight. Thank you all for your amazing questions. Your curiosity and openness about love never cease to inspire me. Remember, whether you believe in instant connections or prefer love that grows slowly, your experiences are valid. Keep exploring, keep loving, and definitely keep those questions coming. I can't wait to dive into more of your thoughts on love in our next episode. Hey there, Soulful Ambassadors. We're diving into your responses from our last chat about love at first sight. You guys had some amazing insights and I can't wait to share them. I'll be reading out some comments that really caught my eye and giving my thoughts on them. So let's jump right in and explore what you all had to say about this fascinating topic. Let's dive into our first response from Miss Kate in New York. She says, Riley, I absolutely believe in love at first sight. It happened to me with my now husband and we've been together for 10 years. The spark was instant and it only grew deeper over time. Wow, Miss Kate, that's such a beautiful story. It's amazing to hear about your instant connection with your husband blossoming into a decade-long marriage. Your experience really shows that sometimes that initial spark can lead to a lifelong bond. It's like your hearts recognized each other from the very beginning. Thanks for sharing your love story with us. It's a wonderful reminder that love at first sight can indeed be the start of something truly special. Now let's hear from David in London. He says, Riley, I'm not sure I agree with the whole love at first sight idea. I think true love takes time to build, and while instant attraction is real, calling it love feels a bit too soon for me. You know what, David? I totally get where you're coming from. That's why I love these conversations. Everyone experiences love differently. Instant attraction can be powerful, but like you said, love usually deepens over time as you build trust and connection. It's a journey, not a destination, right? Thanks for sharing your perspective and reminding us that love can be a slow burn too. Next up, we have Amara from South Africa. She says, I've always thought love at first sight was just a fairy tale, but your episode made me rethink it. 
Maybe it's not just about romantic love, but instant connections that can grow into love over time. Wow, Amara, I'm thrilled that the episode sparked some new thoughts for you. You've hit on something really important here. Those instant connections we feel with someone, whether it's romantic or not, can absolutely be the seeds of love. It's like love at first sight is the beginning of a story, not the whole book. Thanks for sharing your insight and being open to new ideas about love. Leo brings up a really interesting point. He thinks love at first sight is overrated and that real love is built through shared experiences and understanding each other. And you know what? He's not wrong. A lot of what we feel in those first moments is driven by excitement and chemistry. It's that initial spark, but it's not the whole fire. Real love does take work, time, and shared experiences. But here's the thing. For some people, that initial spark is the start of something deeper. It's like the foundation that everything else is built on. So while Leo's got a point about the importance of building love over time, I think it's all about finding that balance between the initial excitement and the deeper connection that grows with time. Next up, we have a comment from Sarah. She says, Riley, I'm a hopeless romantic, so I've always believed in love at first sight. But your episode made me realize that it might be more about the potential for love rather than love itself. That was an important shift for me. Sarah, I'm thrilled to hear that the episode helped you see things from a new angle. You're absolutely right. What we often call love at first sight might actually be recognizing the potential for a deep connection. It's like seeing the first spark that could ignite a beautiful flame. You're still embracing the romance of it all, just with a more nuanced understanding. That's growth. And it's beautiful to see. Now let's hear from Carlos in Mexico City. He says, I have to disagree, Riley. I met my partner and felt nothing at first sight, but we've built something amazing over the years. Sometimes love sneaks up on you when you're not looking. You know what, Carlos? I absolutely love this perspective. It's such a great reminder that love doesn't always follow a predictable path. Your story beautifully illustrates how deep, meaningful connections can grow slowly over time. It's like planting a seed and watching it blossom into something truly spectacular. Thanks for sharing your experience and reminding us all that there's no one-size-fits-all approach to love. Now let's hear from Anita in Paris. She says, I think love at first sight is real, but only for certain people. For me, I need time to get to know someone before I even think about love. Your episode made me see that both ways are valid. Anita, you're absolutely right. Love is such a personal experience, and it's fantastic that you recognize the validity of both instant connections and slow-burning relationships. Some people feel that immediate spark, while others, like yourself, prefer to take things slow and let love develop over time. There's no one-size-fits-all approach to love, and that's what makes it so beautiful and unique for each person. Now let's hear from Ngugi in Nairobi. He says, Riley, I'm still skeptical about love at first sight. Here in Nairobi, relationships are more about building slowly over time, and I feel like love grows through shared experiences. You know what, Ngugi? That's such a valuable perspective. It reminds us that love and relationships can look different across cultures. In some places, that slow burn approach to love is not just preferred, it's deeply ingrained in the culture. And there's so much beauty in that gradual building of connection. Thanks for broadening our conversation and reminding us that love is as diverse as we are. Now let's talk about Lena's comment. She brought up something really interesting. The idea that love at first sight isn't just about romance. Lena said she felt that instant connection with her best friend when they first met, and they've been inseparable ever since. I love this perspective because it reminds us that powerful, immediate connections can happen in all types of relationships. That instant click, that feeling of I've known you forever, it's not limited to romantic partners. Sometimes we meet a friend and just know they're going to be a huge part of our lives. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Raj brings up a great point that I'm sure many of us can relate to. How do we balance that initial excitement with being cautious? It's a delicate dance, isn't it? My advice would be to enjoy the thrill of that initial connection, but also take your time getting to know the person. Think of it like building a house. You need a strong foundation before you can add all the beautiful details. Allow yourself to feel the excitement, but also give yourself permission to slow down and really understand who this person is. It's okay to be cautious while still being open to love. Remember, the best relationships are often those where both people grow together over time. Wow, what an incredible range of perspectives we've heard today. From love at first sight leading to lasting marriages, to skepticism about instant connections, to cultural differences in how we approach relationships. It just goes to show that love is as diverse as we are. Thank you all for sharing your insights and experiences. 
They're what make these conversations so rich and meaningful. Remember, there's no one size fits all when it comes to love. Whether you believe in love at first sight or prefer a slow burn, what matters most is what feels authentic to you. Keep those stories coming, soulful ambassadors. Your experiences and thoughts are the heartbeat of this podcast. Until next time, keep loving, keep growing, and keep sharing. Wow, I can't believe we've reached the end of today's episode. Time really flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? I've had an absolute blast diving into your questions and sharing this journey with you. It warms my heart to know that this podcast is making a difference in your lives, helping you navigate the messy, beautiful chaos we call life. You know what? Keep those questions coming. No matter how personal or out there you think they might be, I want to hear them all. Your experiences and curiosities are what make this show tick, and I'm here for every single one of them. And hey, don't forget about our Hash Hey Soulful Riley segment. It's not just a hashtag. It's our lifeline to stay connected. Your stories, your triumphs, your struggles, they all matter. So keep sharing, keep engaging, and let's keep this soulful community growing stronger with each episode. All right, soulful listeners, I've got some exciting news for you. Remember that amazing promotion we've been running with our fantastic partners at Beducated? Well, today is your last chance to grab that sweet 25% discount. If you've been on the fence about upgrading your bedroom skills, now's the time to jump in. You can find the link and coupon code for this awesome deal in the description box below or on our Instagram. Just head over to at heartbeat underscore chronicles or my personal handle at underscore soulful underscore Riley and check out the Beducated highlight stories. Don't miss out on this opportunity to spice things up and learn something new. The clock's ticking, so go ahead and treat yourself. Let's talk about our awesome merch lineup. We've got something for everyone from travel mugs to cozy hoodies. Want to show off your Heartbeat Chronicles love? Check out our t-shirts, hats, and even phone cases. We've got wall art to spruce up your space and stickers to add a touch of soul to your laptop. And for those chilly nights, wrap yourself in our comfy sweatshirts or snuggle up with our pillows. But wait, there's more. Our holiday merch is dropping in November. Christmas is coming early, folks. Imagine sipping hot cocoa from a Heartbeat Chronicles mug while wearing one of our festive sweaters. It's like a warm hug from the podcast. Ready to shop? Head over to our merch store. You'll find the link in the episode description and on our Instagram handles at heartbeat underscore chronicles and at underscore soulful underscore Riley. Happy shopping. And remember, when you wear our merch, you're not just stylish. You're part of the soulful family. Now let's talk about where you can catch our podcast. We're pretty much everywhere you might want to listen. You can find us on YouTube, Ramble, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Buzzsprout, Amazon Music, Podcast Index, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Pocket Casts, Deezer, Listen Notes, Player FM, Overcast, Castro, Castbox, Podfriend, Good Pods, True Fans, and even the Pods Network. Phew, that's a mouthful. But hey, we want to make sure you can get your dose of soulful living wherever and whenever you want. So whether you're Team Spotify or an Apple Podcast devotee, we've got you covered. Pick your favorite platform and let's keep this conversation going. Hey, soulful listeners, if you want to keep the conversation going beyond this podcast, we've got you covered on social media. You can find us on Instagram and threads at heartbeat underscore chronicles or check out my personal handle at underscore soulful underscore Riley. We're also shaking things up on TikTok as Heartbeat Chronicles Podcast. For our Facebook fam, search for Heartbeat Chronicles Podcast. And don't forget to pin us on Pinterest too. Come join our community, share your thoughts, and let's keep this soulful journey going strong. I want to give a massive shout out to all our soulful ambassadors out there. You guys rock. Your likes, comments, and engagement mean the world to me. And to everyone tuning in right now, thank you so much for being here. If you're loving what you're hearing, don't be shy. Hit that subscribe button, smash that like, and turn on those notifications. That way, you'll never miss out on our soulful chats. Let's keep this heartbeat going strong together. And that's a wrap for today, my soulful friends. But don't forget, this conversation doesn't end here. Got a burning question or a life puzzle you need help solving? Send it our way for the next Hash Hey Soulful Riley segment. Your stories and questions are the heartbeat of this podcast. Until next time, Keep living soulfully and remember, life's messy moments are just part of your beautiful journey. Take care and I'll catch you in the next episode. Wow, 
What an incredible time we've had today, connecting on a deeper level through your stories, questions, and personal experiences. I always feel so grateful for the opportunity to engage with you all in the Hey Soulful Riley segment. Your vulnerability and openness make this community so special, and it's truly heartwarming to see how we support and uplift one another. Remember, our DMs are always open, so keep the conversations flowing, keep reaching out, and keep sharing your heart. You never know how your words might help someone else. Also share this episode or link to this podcast to friends, family, and even colleagues. You never know who might need this soulful loving. As always, stay soulful, stay connected, and don't forget to tune in next week for more heartfelt discussions. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. See you soon, soulful ambassadors. Don't forget to hit that notification button.